Jason Shadrick with Premier Guitar, and we're here with Mark Letieri, a uh, newly minted PRS signature guitar artist, and we're going to talk about his new signature guitar, the Fiore. How are you doing, Mark? I'm good. I still biff the fifth fret harmonic, but it's fine. Let's keep going. <laughs> Let's keep going. That's right. So when you first started talking about a signature guitar with Paul, what were some of kind of the bones of the guitar that you needed that you guys had kind of as a starting point before evolving it into what we see today? Sure. Uh, 22 frets, 25 and a half inch, two post trim, SSH. Yeah. And then we just went from there. Uh, gotcha. Because that's what I've played for years. And so, you know, it's, it's familiar to me for a reason, and so I, we needed to keep that. Right, right. If you're going to have a guitar with your name on it, there's sure. no need to start from complete yeah, scratch need, you know sure <laughs> sure so when so when you brought those ideas in what feedback did paul give you to kind of help guide guide your idea because you know as we know we're guitar players for a reason he's a guitar designer for a reason mm -hmm. so what did you learn from him that helped you kind of realize this vision i think the big let's see i mean there were a couple things we um body carve how it mm. fit how it fit your body how it sits on your knee how it you know, because because it is a new body style. I mean, it's it's it, there's elements of different PRS models in there too, uh, but it's it's pretty much new. So we had to get a lot of things correct so that it just felt comfortable. Um, same thing goes with the neck shape too. This, it's the Fiore neck. So it was we we started with something that they had and, and carved it to where it felt right in my hand. Um, I learned a lot about pickups, mm. and I don't even quite know if I processed all that information in a permanent way but um because a lot of it just kind of went over my head as far as type of wire size of magnets type of magnets t how many wines we're going to put on this and if we do that many wines on this one we got to do this many wines on that one because that one's going to not sound great with this one because these have to you know um <clears throat> but it was good in that re regard because i wanted to have all the pickups work together as like one unit i didn't want it to feel as though there was sort of like an aftermarket kind of swapping in and out of things and just well these are cool let's put these in here um we kind of tried that at, at first because we didn't have anything to start with right and so from there we decided to really tweak them and just create our own set of pickups because mm -hmm. um, the, the first one we put in i think i requested a something that i'd had in a 594 uh which was kind of a lower wind um vintage kind of sound and it just didn't really have enough power to keep up with the with the neck pickups actually and the neck pickups aren't hot pickups but they're very big sounding like round and so it kind of there's a bit of a imbalance there so we beefed up the humbucker quite a bit to to make it work with everything well else. let's uh let's hear a little bit of that let's let's maybe have you hit some distorted tones and let's hear <laughs> kind of what the humbucker sounds like <laughs> yeah and a little rock <laughs> and is the humbucker split or no just straight it's a series it's a series parallel here so i'll clean it up uh quite a bit i got my pedal board down here so if you're hearing all the stomping <laughs> so here you go so here's here's full-on humbucker and then we can series parallel it so the high end still kind of comes through but it has just the right amount of mid-range right which for me like usually if you do that with a humbucker you lose too much and it's kind of like eh but i find it usable in both both positions and it seems like the volume is sticking pretty yes. consistent yeah yes that's that's been the biggest thing with me with splitting humbuckers is it's something either you lose volume or you lose body but this one doesn't do that which is rad <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move to the other two uh the other two single coils and let's hear yeah. some of that yeah 
this is the neck. And what I like about it, if you dig in, you get that nice brightness. If you roll the tone off, it mellows it out. I'm, you know, barely hitting the strings and you still get that kind of top end. You also might be hearing a little bit through my mic, but it's a very expressive single coil and a very expressive tone knob, uh -huh. um, which is the thing I've kind of noticed because, um, you know, in my playing now, I use a Kemper a lot. I use pro um, plugins a lot. And sometimes, like, I need a pickup that works great with, like, a digital thing. Yeah. And sometimes those super vintage pickups don't translate all that well with the digital thing, but what's great about these is that it translates to both. So you plug it into a tube amp and it sounds like a big fat single coil. You've got a whole bunch of dynamics with the volume knob, or you can plug it into your computer, fire up your new modern cool plug-in and it translates well. Um, so yeah, I, I just loved how flexible all the pickups were. Oh, that's so that's so interesting that you that you had that was kind of running through your mind as you were working on these pickups. With well, them. because I mean, when, when the guitar was being built, I was working on my baritone record, my second baritone record. And most, there isn't a single real amp on that record. Ah. And so, but I, of course I wanted the guitar parts to sound cool. Right. <laughs> and so I was using plugins. I was using my Kemper and I was using this on a bunch of stuff. But then I was also getting to beta tested on like the, a few gigs that we were having, you know, <laughs> socially distant gigs. Yeah. Um, and kind of coming back and be like, you know, we need more, we need more bottom end in the humbucker guys. Cause it's got to push the distortion pedal better or something like that. And so it was cool to, to really just get to test it in as many waters as possible. So, so how many like prototype iterations did you go through before you ended up on the production model? Um, three, three, three or four. Yeah. I definitely went to FedEx a lot, <laughs> shifting and, things back and forth with pickups. And, and did you find it was more refining the feel or the sound? Mm, that's a good question. A little bit of both, maybe. You know, we were moving millimeters and decibels. Yeah, yeah. A lot, you know, and and frequencies and things like that, and uh, a lot of significant colors. digits. Yeah, well, they they make they make a difference when you move them, <laughs> uh, and colors too. You know, I have it, oh, it's yeah. funny. I have I have a box of bodies in my garage of colors that we were just trying that I, you know before we found the perfect amaryllis red. <laughs> there you go. Because I know you're you're uh, like your mom's an artist, right? Right. And so right. she contributed to the design a little bit. Tell me about that. Yeah. So I wanted with I I thought it would kind of be a cool idea to have a logo for the guitar. I, I've never named a guitar, so the you know the, the stories that told that my daughter picked it up and you know she was like let's call it flower. So I said okay great. So I figured well she's involved. Let's see if we can get mom involved because I've always wanted her to do something on a guitar for me, whether it was painted or whatnot. And you know maybe one day she'll do a limited private stock PRS painted by <laughs> Marianne Latiri or something. But um, <clears throat> so since we weren't going to put my name on this, um, I thought you know we could keep it black or let's come up with a logo and make mm -hmm. it kind of a real brand thing. And so she took some some Renaissance designs that she had found and kind of retooled them and mocked them up and did her own version with it, and that became the truss rod cover. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Well, for the, for the, for the couple prototypes, I just would put a flower sticker on there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, so great. So uh, they're, when are they going to be available, and what's going to be the price point for them? Uh, they're twenty four forty nine. dollars um, You can get them anywhere. I mean, definitely all the, the major online retailers have them in, in quite a few stores around around the globe. Uh, and I believe they'll start shipping late spring. You okay. probably would want to check with PRS on that one, but that was the last I heard was, when, was when late they, springtime. When they are out, they will not be hard to find, is what you're saying. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all yeah. Right. Well, we're going to have you play us out with something, Mark. Thanks again for hanging with us and giving us a bit of the yeah. backstory about the Fiore. Let's just play some funk, man. And uh, this is Jason Shadrick with Premier Guitar. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and get all of our gear demo videos. <laughs>